Do you have some JSON data in Power Automate and maybe you want to update a property, like set the fact that is sold out is true? Or maybe you want to add a whole new property, such as tickets sold is equal to 50,000. In Power Automate, if you're updating JSON, there's a right way and a wrong way. The right way is going to prevent so many bugs and is going to be so much easier for you to maintain down the road. Well, let's dive into it. Let's pretend I have an array of Broadway shows and I just want to update that the Book of Mormon is sold out. The wrong way to do it is you come in here, add an action, and you pick the select. Once you have that, you pick your source array from earlier Broadway shows, and then you rebuild this whole thing. So our key would be ID, and then I'm going to go in here, select the expression, and type in item bracket ID. I'm literally just copying this. Click add, and then I would do the same thing for show name. So I'm recreating all of these. And then when I get to whichever property I want to update, I would do a little expression here where I would type if equals item show name equals the Book of Mormon, then we want this to be true, otherwise false. And then I would click add. And this is fine. It works. I can click save. And if I actually run this and open up the select, here's my original input. And if we scroll down to the output, yay, is sold out is true. Now, the reason I explained all of this so fast is because I want to hurry up and show you the right way. Here's the problem with this. Let's say you're not in control of this source JSON and the other developer who's working on this decides to add a new property like category. So now, because they've added a new category and you're recreating all this, if we save this and we rerun it, if we open up our select, we'll see there's our category. But once we go to our outputs, look, we lost that category. We're losing data. So let's look at the right way to do this so we can preserve the original array. I've removed everything from my select and I'm gonna come over here into this button and select switch to text mode. And then I'm gonna select the expression. Now select is awesome because it's stepping through each one of our items. So in here, when it steps through our items, I want it to set a new property. In this case, we have to pick our original object. We first have to type in the source. The source is just item. What's the name of this new property? It's called is sold out. If equals item, the show name is the Book of Mormon, then do true. Otherwise, you could do false or a better practice is to type in whatever the current is sold item value is, click add. And if we go to our runs and I open up select, here's my original. But then if I scroll to the bottom, Hamilton is sold out is false. It's added the property and boom, oh. is Mormon is sold out true. Big thanks to Damobird for originally showing me this method. Be sure to subscribe to him. He's almost at 10K subscribers. Link in the description. This method is perfect in 90% of context, but you may need to sometimes take out the object or the item from the list and then go do some modifications to it. Here's a way to accomplish that. First thing I'm going to do is delete my select and I'm going to add a new action. And this one is going to be the filter. So I'm going to filter just for that Book of Mormon. So I'm going to hit Broadway shows. And then in here, I can add the function expression. And let's pick the item show name, click add. And we want to put is equal to the Book of Mormon. And I'm going to name this filter array item to update. Now I'm going to right click this and I'm going to copy this action and I'm going to paste it here because we're also going to do filter rate all items except updated one. And we're going to do show name is not equal to the Book of Mormon and click save. Soon we're going to update this property, put it back in the original items and not have to recreate anything. We're not going to be able to re-add anything to this filter, but we can use variables here. So let's do initialize variable. And we're going to call this one Broadway Shows Final Result. And for type, you can pick Array. Once we got that done, let's scroll down here and then actually update that variable by selecting Set Variable here and then pick our Broadway Show Results. And the value is simply going to be the 
filter all items except updated one. Two more steps and we're home free. Let's do a compose. I've named this compose set show as sold out and here's where we do our modification. We're gonna use the set property and I'm gonna do use the first expression. I'm using the first because it's an array. Even though there's one thing in it, it's still an array. So I'm gonna select first and then the next thing is what is the name of the property and it is sold out. And then our last item is what do we wanna update it to and that is true, click add. If we save it and rerun it and scroll down to set show is sold out, we'll see there it is category was preserved and here's our updated property value now the last two steps are super simple we want to come up here and add an append an array variable so you just go to action type in append and then append to array in here select the only variable we have and then select the previous item of set show as sold out click save and then just as a sanity check, I made a brand new compose and just put our variable in it. And so if we run this whole thing, if we scroll to the bottom to final results, we'll see that the output is here's the original stuff. All the categories are still there and Book of Mormon is equal to true. So now you never have to worry about someone else updating the source data because whatever it is, all we're doing is modifying this one property. I hope that helps you. If it did, please subscribe or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to say hi. Take care.